Yo. Giving Rize's persona a sick looking transformation and then letting her fight and do combat? I'm all here for it. I love that so much. That's so good. Big fan. Very big fan. All right. Uh, well, now we move on to Naoto's Chapter 6. The Panda Bear. The town becomes a labyrinth as the clock strikes midnight. It's just like the dark hour described in those documents. I take a deep breath and check my surroundings. First, I review the situation. If I remain calm and collect as much data as I can, I should be able to put together a picture of what's going on. No one's here yet. I'd have thought someone would have come straight to Juness. From what I can tell on my way here, the town is utterly empty. Are you, Senpai, and the others all right? If this phenomenon is the same as the Dark Hour from the documents, then the only ones capable of moving about in it are Persona users like us. But why? If this was deliberately induced, then what is the culprit's aim in doing so? Since my call with Labrys was cut off, I have no idea about her safety either. Is the helicopter she and her companions were riding safe? And what happened to Mitsuru-san and her retinue? This is a dangerous line of thought. I'm losing my cool and can't keep my thoughts straight. I'm no detective in this state. Calm down. If I start worrying, there'll be no end to it. I take another deep breath. I know already that the red fog filling the area isn't poisonous at first blush. First blush? Why do you think like this? I did consider that the enemy might be employing an airborne toxin, but the whole town is covered in this stuff and there's no way to move about while still avoiding still, it. Still, it may be best to try not to breathe it in to the extent I can avoid it. I, okay. Naoto-kun? Huh? Oh, it's Shadow Chie. I'm thrown for a loop at being called two out of the blue. I was so lost in thought that my reaction is slightly delayed. Chie-senpai, is that you? Hmm? Uh-huh. Why? Thank goodness you're safe. What about the others? How should I know? They've got nothing to do with me. A cheerful answer, the tone of which sounds like Chie-senpai's usual self, but her actual words ring a warning bell in my mind. My senses seem untampered with. From which I take it that you are not Chie Senpai. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Little old me? I'm Chie Satanaka. Though no, I'm, I'm a fake one. one. Based on the real Chie. I see. So you make no effort to hide your true nature. And what are your intentions? What a foolish question, even for me. The town was covered in the strange red fog shortly after the disappearance of Mitsuru-san and her people, and now a false Chie senpai identical to the real thing stands before me. I have no inkling as to the enemy's goals, but it is at least apparent that they expect to fight us in order to accomplish them. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? I came to fight you. Are you? Rather, is the culprit who created you the same one who seized Labrys, or is it an accomplice of his? I want information right now. Even if what stands before me is an imitation, it is honestly answering me this much. I felt that it would be smarter to draw out as much information from it as possible. <laughs> you really are sharp, aren't you, Naoto Kun? But who cares about any of that? Persona! What? A familiar shadow takes form behind the fake Chie Senpai. Impossible. As close as these fakes are, they are not the genuine article. Yet, not only was this one able to summon the same persona that Chie Senpai uses, it did so in the real world. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> After dodging the attack, I jump back and draw the gun at my side. She's got a gun! Get down! This is no illusion. That was a heavy strike with considerable weight behind it. It seems the circumstances are different from before. What sort of scheme is unfolding now? Uh, uh, it's only not supposed to be the detective's job. If you don't hurry and get ready, you'll get yourself hurt. So you have no intention of providing answers. Very well. Ooh, now that's our now chan It's so convenient for us that you catch on quick. Is that General Teddy? You understand without me having to explain, right? Thanks for participating in the P1 Climax. Now then, on to Nao-chan's first round. Obviously, this is a serious battle with nowhere to run. Oh, uh, by the way, Mitchan and the others you're looking for were smushed and captured by me, General Tenny. In other words, if you keep winning in the tournament, you might be able to save them. <laughs> Okay. 
though I had considered this as a possibility, I can't help but furrow my brow at General Teddy's words. So Mitsurasan and her team were indeed captured. The Shadow operatives are professionals when it comes to Shadow-related matters. So if our opponent captured them so easily, then we clearly cannot afford to underestimate them. Oh, and you can use your persona too, Nakoken. Well then, bring on the win! Shaolin Showdown! I don't know why that just came to my mind. Immediately after the fake's cry, red pillars appear midair surrounding us. They swiftly fall, embedding themselves into the ground. Who's gonna pay for all this property damage? Certainly the taxpayers. So this is the ring this time. I can surmise the basic rules. It's fair to say invisible walls stretch between the pillars, and I will not be able to proceed until the match is completed. In which case, there's only one option open to me. It seems I haven't time to waste, so I won't bother holding back. Persona! Great! I wouldn't be so certain. You can never win against me. Here we go, lads. So it's looking like there's only gonna be one shadow copy per, so... Like, they're not gonna double up. Like, it doesn't look like there's gonna be another shadow Narukami or anything like that. And, uh, they've made sure that we've only fought, like, one each and all, so I wonder if, if we beat Shadow GA here, Shadow Yukiko, Yosuke, Teddy, Kanji, I think that'll be all of the Investigation Team's shadows defeated, or the, the fake thumbs, it's not really their shadows, but you know what I mean. Ow, my feelings. Hey, check this out, Judo Chop. Wrecked. Fire! Get muted. And judo chopped. Okay. You lived? Die. Judo chopped. As I said, you cannot win against me. Our forms can be mimicked, but you can never replicate our inner drive. It was strong, though I wore a brave face to intimidate my opponent. Had I put one foot wrong, it could have been me who was defeated. For some reason, I feel much more exhausted than I remember being the than I remember being the case when I would fight inside the TV world. I don't know why I couldn't read that. Is it because of my opponent's abilities, or this is a setup? There is a mighty cracking sound, and the red pillars to the four sides of me shatter. I have evidently emerged the victor without any problems, and gained the right to proceed. As that happens, the false Chia Senpai begins to disintegrate before my eyes. It must have been created by tampering with the shadow. What is that? How nice of it to show up again after you asked what it was. What appear to be grains of light float up from the rapidly dissolving fake. They form a ribbon of light, drawing an arc in the air, and drift away in a particular direction as if drawn to something. Thinking back upon the battle, I believe I saw similar grains of light whenever my persona and the fakes would clash. What are they? Could they be fragments of something? My boy Zemnis is up there creating Kingdom Hearts. I know it. When I follow the light with my eyes, I can scarcely believe what I see. There is an enormous and bizarrely shaped structure which has no place in a rural town or anywhere else in the real world. Is that the hill where Yasugami High is? The orbs of light are gathering there. Something's off. The opponent's methods are different from Labrys' case. They're challenging us head on now. The salient aspects of this case are the red fog enveloping the real world, a giant tower atop Yasugami High, the grains of light that appear in battle, and the strange exhaustion I feel. Suddenly, something pops into my mind. Those documents I obtained from public safety, one of them detailed a past case involving Mitsurasan's team, involving a giant tower that only appeared during a special period of time. If I recall correctly, it was called Tartarus, that aberrant tower was built to call forth something monstrous. Is it possible that? Is the culprit of this case intending to... No! Oh, hey. How's it going, dude? I must ask that you not needlessly inquire further. Now is not yet the time. Okay, now I see the uh, Yasugami High thing around his waist. <sighs> Impossible. This was unlike my encounter with the false Chie Senpai. I was paying close attention to my surroundings. Yet this man suddenly appeared behind me, as if from thin air. Nothing personnel, kid. Naoto Shirogane, you will be making your exit here. Die. 
A clear voice pierces the red fog, and the next sound that reaches my ears is what seems to be a blade slicing the air. Yo, is one of the Persona 3 casts gonna come in clutch right here? We gonna see Junpei or Yukari or maybe even Labrys? My boy Koromaru? Ken? Oh, never mind. Naoto's just dead. All right, well, sucks for all the people who like Naoto a lot. She died. Naoto cornered. Adachi's rules. Oh, boy. Oh, we have to continue with this side before we can go back over. Oh, well, they have, like, a long break, it looks like, for their arrows to come back down. Okay. I want more kanji, man. I want more Rize. I mean, like... I'm just gonna see if Naoto dies or not. The strike I barely dodged grazes my cheek and slices through the air. The pain of the initial blow which struck my back is beginning to affect my breathing. My throat constricts and I have difficulty getting air into my lungs. Only by force of will do I keep from blacking out as I look toward my assailant who now approaches me. Oh, I can zoom the story thing with L2 and R2? Thank you. I will do that as soon as we're back at the story selection thing. A young man, and he wears a Yasugami High uniform. You dodged. Such a struggle, you put up. You're wasting my time. Yo, this music is sick. I'm vibing. Who are you? I am Minazuki. Show me Minazuki. I am the one who will destroy you, the Kirijo fools, and this world. Uh, so, you're the ones who captured Mitsuru-san and... Yes, I caught them off guard, just as I did with you here. It seems you're not very perceptive. Some Mitsuru-san and her people have fallen into enemy hands after all. It's hard to believe. Is this young man truly the mastermind behind these incidents? Though your intuition is impressive. For you to discern our plan after only one battle. It's an absurd scheme. What are you trying to summon with that tower? I gather that his plan is far more dreadful than what I had imagined at the start. By the way, very perspe uh, perceptive to figure out what they're trying to do. Literally, if like, it's a pretty easy guess to make if you just know what happened in Persona 3's story, which Naoto does because she read about Tartarus. It's not that perceptive. She's like, oh, they're doing the thing that they did in Persona 3 because they made a tower the same way. Doi. That grotesque tower called Tartarus, which was brought forth to call upon something inhuman. What if the culprit in this case also intends on summoning something to this world? Ooh, that's really interesting. Okay. It's been a while since I played Persona 3, but I, for I forgot that Tartarus, like, existed for the purpose of calling down Nyx. And that it's not just a dungeon with, like, 200 floors that you have to go through because that's how you proceed. That's how you get gameplay. So it hadn't really occurred to me that, like, this tower would be doing the same... Like, it would have the same purpose of summoning something. So I, now I'm really interested in what they're trying to do with it. What if the reason our enemy makes no move to hide the fakes and challenges us to legitimate fights is because they need to gather something before that plan can be achieved? Hearts. We need hearts for Kingdom Hearts. Don't get me wrong. That in itself is not my objective. All I want is to grant a wish. Never mind, they're, grab they're, they're gathering the Dragon Balls. A wish? Whose? There's no need for you to know. Nyx was there for no real reason. Tartarus just existed because the experiment blew up at the school. Mm, okay, so that makes more sense then. Because I was thinking to myself, like, I didn't realize that Tartarus, like, existed to summon Nyx. I thought Tartarus just happened to be there. And it sounds like it's more what I thought it was. I thought that I was just not remembering Persona 3 well enough. This isn't good. He's already close enough for his attack to reach me. I'm still suffering from his earlier strike. Minazuki's next blow will surely cost me my life. I need to buy whatever time I can now. You kidnapped Labrys and attempted to collect our Personas before, but that's not the case this time. You're using Mitsurasan and her team as hostages, and you've prepared fake versions of us to fight. There's only one reason why you'd create such elaborate imitations of us, even to the point of summoning personas and have them challenge us. You set this entire scenario up so that we wouldn't think twice about fighting. That's right. Everything was set up from the start. It's the same rules as last time. After drumming that impression into our heads, our opponents admit outright that they're fakes. And as a result, I had stopped trying to figure out the motivations behind their actions. 
Since they'd taken hostages and warped this town, we concluded that we had no choice but to play along and were willing to fight without further hesitation. But I suspect Minazuki must be gaining those shining particles I saw earlier through our battles with the fakes. Again, your intuition is impressive. By forcing you to fight in this fog, I am carving off bits of your personas. Yo, why are you admitting that, though? Carving off our personas? I've said too much. It seems our guests of honor have arrived. Yo, Persona 3 cast? Let's go. Minazuki turns his gay. I don't think that's how you pronounce his name. He pronounced it differently. When when Sho pronounced his last name, I was like, really? That's how you say that? Because when I look at it, I think Minazuki. I think he said like Minaz Minazuki. Or I, I got to hear him say it again, dude. I can't remember. I'm just going to call him Sho. Sho turns his gaze to the... I can say that. It's only three letters. Sho turns his gaze to the sky and narrows his eyes as if looking beyond the red fog. Koromaru! Oh, it's the helicopter. It's going to be Yukari and Labrys. Labrys! But please, Koromaru! Simultaneously, the faint sound of a helicopter becomes evident. I enjoyed my time with you. If the opportunity arises again, I'd like to speak with you further. With that, Minazuki, show whatever, gracefully puts distance between us. The moment there's enough space for someone to intrude between us, a shadow comes dancing down from the sky as if awaiting that exact moment. Hurrah! Yo, it's Labrys. Labrys was with Yukari, I think. Guests of honor have arrived. I've been waiting for you, Shadow Operatives. Labrys stands between Minazuki and myself as if shielding me. It seems I've been spared the worst case scenario. The sound of the helicopter's rotors still remains in the sky above us. It appears to be slowly descending. I strongly suspect that a plume of dusk is installed into that helicopter. What? I recall an entry in the public safety documents explaining how a plume of dusk would enable machinery to continue functioning, even in sub. Even in supernatural space times where no other electronics would work. Oh, okay. I guess. It's unlike me to let my mind wander into matters of parascience. Perhaps it's the relief at my life no longer being in peril. Who are you? Why are you doing all this? Who am I? Hmm? My constant question. It's quite intriguing that a machine created for suppressing shadows would ask you. I'm sorry, could you speak up? I can't hear you over the helicopter! What? But first, let me see the rest of you. As Sho keeps his eyes on Labrys, a black liquid shadow rises from behind him, instantly ascending to the helicopter. It's a shadow? No, a persona. And it means to take down that helicopter. Yo, his persona looked pretty sick. I need to see it. I need to see a closer look at it. No! You can't Labrys cries out in desperation. Persona users, though they may be, they are still human. If they go down along with the helicopter they're in, they'll be grievously wounded at best. Persona. Yo, Yukari! An unfamiliar woman's voice calls out from within the helicopter. All at once, a tremendous gust of wind swirls about the helicopter, repelling the Black Shadow's ambush at the last second. Ah, quite the persona user. However... Yukari-san, he's winding up for another one! We're getting off, Koromaru! Ken and Koromaru! Let's go, Koromaru! Yes! Oh my goodness, Ken's persona looks so jank. Just as the whirlwind dies down, an attack originating from within the helicopter speeds toward Minazuki's persona, which was primed to attack again. Amazing! What a perfectly timed maneuver. The surrounding fog lights up, and as the personas clash at each other, those grains of light that Minazuki is after disperse. At the same time, three figures jump out of the helicopter and descend towards us. The whir of the helicopter's rotors increases, which I take to mean that it's flying off somewhere. So then, its objective from the start was to drop these people off here. 